This video is brought to you by Squarespace, my favorite all-in-one platform to build beautiful websites and online shop. Hello, welcome to my bookbinding studio. Today I'm going to show you my paper recommendations for your bookbinding projects. In my studio, I currently have chipboard, Davy board, and a thin, low density gray board. I mostly use Davy board, which is acid free and manufactured for bookbinding, so it has warp resistance. And I use chipboard for practice books or test books, since it's not guaranteed acid free. I picked up the thin gray board to make windows in my book covers. Here are the thicknesses of each board. With imperial measurements, they're usually expressed in decimals. For standard size books, or if you're just starting out, I recommend a 0.08 inch or two millimeter board to start. You can increase the thickness of your board to 0.12 inch or three millimeters for larger books. I'm testing the paper grain for each board here. The boards will bend more easily along the grain. The boards along with all the paper in your book should have paper grain running parallel to the spine. Alternatively, you can use the backings of sketch paper pads as book board. I'm not sure if they're acid free. You can use a pH pen to find out. What are some other options that you can think of or that you have used as book board? Cardstock paper or cover weight paper is what I like to use as soft covers for single signature books like pamphlet stitch. I usually use 80 pound cover weight but you could go up to a hundred pound cover weight for a more sturdy paper. Using the bend test, all of these sheets are long grain. I've found that the quality of cardstock really varies. I found these lovely papers at Joanne. They're textured and come in so many beautiful colors. I love the 12 by 12 size, which means that I can use it as a cover for an A6 notebook. Scrapbook paper pads at the Arts and Crafts store is an excellent cardstock option as well. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an artist friendly, small business friendly website builder. The resources page on my website has been sitting stagnant for a while now, and I decided to give it a small refresh by adding my video links and other websites that I think would be useful for curious visitors. This took me no time at all, and I love that each time I go and do an update, there are new customizations that easily add personality to the page. It feels like Squarespace has truly designed their platform for the creator and visitor in mind. No coding skills required. Once you have a vision, you can build your dream website effortlessly. To get started, go to squarespace.com bittermelon for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. For general use text blocks, these are my go-to paperweights. A 24 pound writing paper and an 80 pound sketch paper. I've tried many of Nina's papers and they're very trustworthy. I enjoy writing on them with my fountain pens. I especially like their recycled options. A heavier writing paper option that I use to make journals that I sell is 32 pound writing, which is also known as 80 pound text weight. This sketch paper from Blick is the only loose leaf ream that I can find from art supply stores. They're affordable and the 9x12 size is very versatile. Mm -hmm. 
Since letter size paper is always long grain, many bookbinders buy 11 by 17 paper to cut down in half, which creates short grain letter size paper. Short grain paper allows you to fold along the grain, which puts less stress on the fold. This also means that when signatures are bound into a book, the pages will lay more flat and turn more smoothly. For mixed media and watercolor sketchbooks, you can use large sheets of watercolor paper. Identify the paper grain and then do some math to decide the signature sizing. Papers of this weight tear nicely to create soft edges. I like glue bound paper pads because it's easy to tear off each sheet to fold into signatures. Both of these papers are short grain which are perfect for turning into sketchbooks. If you're a visual artist, check to see if your favorite paper comes in convenient sizing and paper grain. This is Lakta paper handmade in Nepal. They're made of fast-growing Lakta bushes, making them tree-free and very sustainable. The standard sheets are about 60 GSM and they come in sheets of 20 by 30 inches. Since they're handmade, the fibers settle randomly on the mold, resulting in a lack of paper grain. These are hand marbled papers. Every sheet is unique and is a piece of art in itself. The paper type and weight can range depending on the preference of the marbling artist. Some of my OG followers know that Chiogami is my favorite decorative paper to work with. Patterns inspired by kimono textiles are silk screened by hand layer by layer on large sheets of 24 by 36 paper that has a weight of 70 GSM. There are so many beautiful handmade papers to discover and many of them have rich cultural histories. What are your favorite decorative papers to work with? Sometimes you'll come across printed papers that are also advertised as wrapping paper. These could work too. Make sure they're high quality and the weight should almost be a poster weight. Flimsy wrapping paper won't work at all. Just experiment with papers you come across. It doesn't hurt to be adventurous. For end papers, you'll need something that can handle glue well. So any of the handmade papers or cardstock. I like using cardstock as end paper sometimes because it has minimal expansion and pull when glued. That's all I have for today. My paper preferences have really evolved over the years and I think yours will too. I hope this video offers a good launching point or gave you some new ideas of papers to try. Thank you to my patrons for discussing this video idea with me. Happy bookbinding!